God is in charge. Messengers are just that. We are messengers. We deliver the message, but the message must be delivered in love and in compassion, not from some high mantle of impossibility. You can do this. You can walk up before God, but the messengers have to be given directions and you as the receiver of the message must apply the directions to your life. Good morning and welcome to Never Alone Christian Center and the NAC Experience. I'm your pastor, Pastor K. My wife and I, Ms. Shafan Wiley, want to thank you for taking time out of your day to join us this morning here at Never Alone Christian Center online. We want to let you know that we love you and that we're praying for you and your family. Join us this morning in our scripture read out of the book of Psalm chapter 12, verses 5 through 8. And the word of God reads, it says, The Lord replies, I have seen violence done to the helpless, and I have heard the groans of the poor. Now I will rise up to rescue them as they have longed for me to do. The Lord's promises are pure like silver, refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them from this lying generation, even though the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that is in the midst of us right now this morning. We ask that you be glorified in the midst of this service. We pray that you continue to bless your people, continue to grow us strong up and grow us strong up and mighty in you. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. If you're ready, we're ready. Let's go. Alrighty, it is time to go to work, and I'm excited to jump right back into our series entitled Kingdom Thinking. But before I do that, I wanted to thank you for your continued support of Never Alone Christian Center and the NAC experience. Keep in mind, there are four ways you can give. You can visit the website at neveralonecc.org. There you have the option to give on the website. We also have the Tively app, which can be found on the Google Store and the Apple Store. And we also have Cash App and PayPal. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. You're helping push the vision and the mission forward here at Never Alone Christian Center and helping us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the giver. We thank you for those who are doing it in obedience, God, and not begrudgingly. We thank you that you have already filled our storehouses by faith. And we pray, God, that we will continue to operate and do diligence and use wisdom with all the resources that you blessed us with. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. All right. If you have your Bible, please turn to our foundational scripture, which is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. But for the sake of time, I would love to read all the verses, but we'll be reading verses 1 and 2. And if you've been following our series, we've been working out of the theme of the year, which is preparing for the king, kingdom thinking. And this particular series is our introduction to the year of kingdom thinking. And the word of God reads in Matthew 3, chapter 1 and 2, it says, In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and he began preaching. His message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity to glorify your holy and your righteous name. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit right now in operation. And we ask right now that all your gifts that you so desire would be in operation. I pray that I can hear, see, know, and understand based upon the call that has been placed upon my life in this ministry. For this call and this cause, I was sent to help people find Jesus Christ, save and to deliver them, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and to disciple them. So today, God, I take my assignment seriously 
and I do what it is you have asked me to do. And as in Jesus Christ's holy name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. So for several weeks, we've been working out of the series, Kingdom Thinking. And if this is your first time joining us here at Never Alone Christian Center, first of all, welcome. Keep in mind that I am a teacher and every teaching builds upon another teaching. So make sure you check out all the teachings on our YouTube channel. So we've been working out of this, this teaching, Kingdom Thinking, and what we said earlier throughout the course of laying the foundation is that I believe more Christians would enjoy their faith walk if they truly understood the operation of the kingdom of God. If we truly knew what God was trying to do in the earth, if we truly understood what kingdom thinking truly is and what God is doing through the body of Christ, I believe that a lot of the small arguments and bickering that's taking place in the body of Christ and the disagreements would fade away because we would understand what God is trying to do, which is to bring us back into connection with our heavenly father and to put us back into heavenly places. But so often our thinking pattern takes us to the left or takes us to the right and it takes us in a place where God doesn't desire for us to be. The purpose of this teaching is to shift our thinking to kingdom thinking, to start thinking how God would have us to think. Yes, we have a body. Yes, we have a spirit, a soul, and a mind, and we live in this earth. So I understand we are not flying around and floating around like angels. We have to live our lives in the natural sense. But as we're living our lives, we can have the thinking process of the kingdom of God because as we've established last week and throughout the course of this series, we are kingdom citizens. We said the goal is to organize and to bring focus to the church of Jesus Christ. Is the church of Jesus Christ focused right now? Are we doing what God has asked us to do? Every, every time frame in earth, every dispensation in earth has a focus for the church. There's a time for seeking and saving the lost. There's a time for healing and miracles and delivering. There's a time for the harvest. There's a time for a deserted time. There's a time that we all go through where the love is overflowing. God's mercy is overflowing. His grace is overflowing. There's always times changing in the body of Christ. Now we understand that God is in eternity. He doesn't operate in time, but he's put us as his children in time so that we can continue to work the ground and do what it is he has called us to do. So I ask the question, what times are we in right now? Are we in a time of seeking and saving those who are lost? I would say yes. Are we in a time of healing and delivering? I would say yes, but we're also in a time of focusing the body of Christ on doing the work of God until his return, which is soon to be. Now, we left off in our point number five last week because I want to get right to our new information today because next week I want to move into the next portion of this particular uh, theme of the year, which is kingdom love kingdom love. But for now, let's continue with this particular topic of kingdom thinking. Now, we said our point number five is we must listen to the messengers of God. That's what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, listening to the messengers of God. And we said we may not always agree with the messengers. We may not always understand what the messengers are teaching us. But we have to come to an agreement that God has called people to lead and to guide us into truth. But as God has put shepherds over us to lead us and guide us, God also speaks to us as individuals to reaffirm what we are being taught. How often do we go back and review what the pastor or bishop or overseer has taught us? How often do we make sure that it lines up with the word of God, not only for our personal lives, but for the growth and development of our local church? How often do we review? Oftentimes we do not. I've been guilty. We go to church, we stream it online, we go in person, whatever you decide to do, we hear the message, we receive it, we write down notes, we put it on our phone, our iPad, everything looks cool and everything is written down and then we toss it to the side and we don't see it again until next week. We don't confirm anything. 
any of it. We don't see if it lines up with the word of God. We don't, we don't see if it meets the will of God. And this is how we can be led astray to the left and to the right. This is how we can be pushed into situations and lies and deception. This is how we can be put in situations where we're running up our credit card and throwing money at the pastor's feet. Why? Because we don't confirm or check out anything. You see, that's not God's thinking process. God wants us to be in the know. He wants us to be connected with truth. He wants us to be able to make wise decisions. And as we said early on, it doesn't take any effort to look around at our world and see that evil is ever present with us. But because evil is ever present with us does not mean we cannot do what it is that God has called us to do. Now, under our point number five, we looked at our letter A, which is, we should be listening to the message of God. We said, what should we be listening to? We said, we should be listening for truth and not fantasy. And last week under our letter B, we said, we should be listening for directions. And we broke that down into three particular points. We said, listening to directions, not only for our personal lives, but we should be listening for directions for the church. And we should be listening for directions for our family. And we said, while we're listening for direction, there should always be a clear vision there should be a plan to accomplish the vision and we should be documenting the actions to complete the vision. It doesn't matter how great the vision is, how great the goal is, how great the dream is, how great the business is, how much you want to achieve on the, on the scholastic level. It doesn't matter with any of those things. If they all just stay in our mind and stay in our hearts and we do nothing to put together a plan to accomplish the vision, we do nothing to document what we are accomplishing, it will just die with us as we die in the Lord. The visions and dreams will go away. Why? Because we've done no action to do what it is that God has called us to do. We've taken no action to start that business. We've taken no action to finish our academics. Why? Because we just believe God said it. We know it's in our heart, but we have the vision, but we do nothing to accomplish it. You see? The seeds of are there, but are we watering the seeds? Are we nurturing our gifts? Are we nurturing our dreams and our talents? This is kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking is not waiting for God to do a miracle in our lives. Kingdom thinking is taking what God has taught us and putting it into operation. Put into operation. So we looked at last week, we should be listening for directions for the church, for our personal lives, and for the lives of our family. You see, God is in charge, as we roll into our new information here. God is in charge. Messengers are just that. We are messengers. We deliver the message. But the message must be delivered in love. It must be delivered in compassion, not, for, not from some high mantle of impossibility. It's just like the mailman. He delivers the mail. He is not the one who wrote the letters. He's not the one sending out the bills. He's not the one who wrote the newspaper or distributing all the flyers. He is just the mail carrier. He brings it to your house and you pull it out of the mailbox and you go through it to see what is applicable to your life. And you pay the bills, you read this, you read that letter, you send back, whatever it is. Now the mailman has done his job, he's dropped off the mail, and he has left, gone back to the mail carrier location or the post office. That is what we serve as messengers, as teachers, as preachers, as leaders, as bishops, as overseers, whatever title you want to give yourself. We carry the message. We bring it to your house. We put it in your mailbox. Now it's up to you to go to the mailbox, to pull out the message, and to apply what is necessary to your life, to your vision, accomplish your goals, accomplish your path, to walk in your gifts. It's all about receiving the message. How much mail is still in your mailbox? from God you see those of us who desire to experience an intimate relationship with God and be a part of his reign on earth we must be connected and in tune with the messengers of God you say well Pastor Kay I'm sick and tired of going to these churches and they're cheating me and they and they they lying to me and they're deceptors and they're giving me bad counsel and bad advice and listen look at me I understand there are many 
churches not doing what God has asked us to do. This is why it's so important that we're filled with the spirit of God so that he can lead us into a place where we will grow and develop. I believe if you are listening to this teaching, I am for you to help you grow and develop, not with some fancy or fashion, not with great fancy words, but with a simple simplistic message of the, uh, of forgiveness, of walking in Christ, of accepting Jesus Christ, and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. Very few are willing to give up everything to experience the reality of the kingdom of God. As much as we may try to deny it, we all have a foot resting in the world. Sacrifice is difficult. Sacrifice is difficult. Thus, the definition is to surrender something prized or desirable for sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. In other words, sacrifice is giving up something we love. Giving up something we love. God would never ask us to sacrifice anything and not replace it with something that is better. I think that is the, the setback on the whole back or the fear that many of God's people experience because they believe if they sacrifice for God, they can't replace the joy they thought they had in the world. But what you don't understand is, or what we have to understand collectively is that the joy that the world offers is temporary. And God will always supply joy to us. He will always fill us with kindness and love. He will always take that which is evil or bad or sin out of us and fill us with righteousness. But we have to once again allow this to take place. Now listen carefully, all growth, we're still talking about kingdom thinking and God willing, we're gonna wrap up this particular division of the, of the teaching this year. All growth, mentally, physically, and spiritually will require our path to change. All growth will require our path to change. I always think about flowers and plants and garden because I like to be outside in the yard and things of that nature. When you put a seed in a pot, it begins to grow and it begins to sprout into whatever tree or plant it is. Eventually you have to go from the small pot to the medium size to the large and eventually the plant or tree becomes so great you have to immerse it into the earth. You see some of us are becoming too big for the flower pots that God has planted us in. He's trying to remove us from the flower pots. He's going to keep all your roots intact and he's trying to plant you in the earth. I believe that's what God has done in my life. God saw fit that I was growing in a flower pot and it was time to come out of the flower pot and to be planted in the earth. So here I am, been in this flower pot for nearly 40 years of my life and now I've been taken out of the flower pot, planted into the earth and my roots are beginning to grow and spread. It's not because of me, but it's because of the spirit of God down on the inside and it's time for you to get out your flower pot and allow God to plant you in the earth. Your potential in the flower pot will never exceed your potential in the earth. You see, growth mentally, physically, and spiritually will require our path to change. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And then I want to give you eight reasons that change is good. I mentioned some of these reasons a couple of weeks ago in, in the Faith Unbuttoned podcast. And I want to go through them again in a little more detail because they're so good. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Anything mentally, spiritually, or physically, in order for it to grow, will require change. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. This is when Jesus begins to call his first disciples. Now, let's look at this carefully. It says, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Now, when God comes into your life, he's not looking for us to be a bum laying on the side of the road. 
When God is looking for people to work in the garden, when God is looking for people to do his, to operate in their gift and to do his will, he's looking for people who are not afraid of work. If you are afraid of work, then working in ministry, functioning for God is going to be difficult because God looks for workers. He looks for people who have character and integrity. Now, character cannot be purchased. It has to be developed. Integrity cannot be purchased. It has to be developed. It cannot be cast upon you. It cannot be given to you by a gift. It has to be developed through time and trial and test. We said change mentally, physically, spiritually requires has to take place in order for growth to happen. Continue reading here. It says Jesus called out to them. He said, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets and at once and followed him. What did they do? Did they stop fishing? No. I'm sure they kept their jobs as fishing, but their path had to change. In order for us to grow, in order for them to grow spiritually, mentally, and physically. And what I'm saying here is that when God comes into our lives and he's trying to teach us kingdom thinking, think about you have a pie and it's 100%. When God comes in, God may come in and say, look, I need to use this 90% of your pie and you take that 10% and continue to do what it is that you're doing operate in your business, do whatever you need to do, function with your family, be a husband, be a wife. He said, but I'm going to take this 90. It's going to be so great. It's going to magnify that 10%, but it requires a sacrifice of your time, a sacrifice of your thinking pattern, a sacrifice of your character and integrity, a sacrifice of your resources to allow God to function in your life. This is kingdom thinking, allowing God. This is the misconception that God is not a dictator. God is not going to bang you over the head, but he said, allow me to function in your life. At some point, we have to say, God, do you, do you, God, here I am, do you, you see, eight reasons change can be good. Number one, internal change will help us focus. Are you focused? Are you focused? See, in order to become focused, we have to change something on the inside. In other words, we have to change our habits and our hobbies. We have to change our thinking process. We have to change how we see a thing. We have to change how we view a thing. We have to do this from the inside out. Change starts from the inside. And when we begin to change on the inside, then we can begin to focus. Number two, external change will help shape us. God's trying to mold us. He's trying to build us. The scripture says he's the potter. We are the clay. What is he doing? He's trying to mold us and build us. First, he changes us on the inside by by saying, behold, a new creature in Christ Jesus becomes you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So he starts on the inside. And when he changes us on the inside, he changes our thinking. He works on our character and our integrity. He says, now your external change will begin to come. He said, I'm going to be in the shape you and mold you. This is moving you from the flower pot and planting you in the earth. He begins to shape and mold and grow us into who he has called us to be. But this happens when we allow God to come in. Change can be good. Number three, change ensures life stays exciting. People say, oh, church is born, uh, walking as a Christian is born and serving Jesus is born. Well, then you are not experiencing change in your life. Because when God changes things in your life, things become exciting. Things become marvelous. Things become great because we have to allow God to change. Now, you may not get the same feeling that you got when you was clubbing and hanging out in the world. I'm not saying you're going to get that same emotion because that's what that is. But when God changes us, he shifts us into another pattern where you still will find your joy. And you'll find your happiness. The problem is we think that the the experiences we have in the world are going to match what God, God is better. But if your expectation or your, your bar for the joy of God has been set by the standard of the world, you have already come in defeated. You've already come in defeated. Number four, change leads to opportunity and experiences. 
God's trying to give us an opportunity, literally, of a lifetime. He's trying to give us experiences that we've never experienced before. God is trying to take your marriage to new heights and to new depths. He's trying to take your children to new heights and new depths. He's trying to take your academics to new heights and new depths. He's trying to take your business to new heights and new depths. But he said change has to incur growth mentally and spiritually. He said in order to do this, you have to be willing to sacrifice. He said change leads to opportunity and experiences. Changing how we think about a thing changes our opportunities and our experiences in life. Number five, change ensures that bad situations end. And what are we talking about? Kingdom thinking. We're talking about listening to the messengers. And if we're listening to the messengers, what we're trying to establish here is that we should be listening for direction. And while we're listening for direction, direction often shifts us to change. Are you tired of the bad situations? Are you tired of the drama? Are you tired of the lack of income? Are you tired of the poor job? Are you tired of the, of your, of the arguing in your marriages? Are you tired of fussing with your children? Are you tired of the neighbors? Are you tired of the dog? Are you tired of your environment? Then what are you going to do about it? If you're waiting for God to send down miraculous pass from heaven and part the Red Sea, stop waiting. God shows favor. He sends the messengers. He gives you wisdom and truth. Yes, God can do a miracle, but God's not going to do a miracle when we can do it as man. We're looking for God to do something that we are capable of doing. You see. Number six, change helps us to move on, to move on. You know that relationship that you're in? If you're unwilling to change, you'll never move on. You'll continue to be hurt. You'll continue to get your heart broke. You'll continue to climb back and forth in and out of debt. You'll continue to be ashamed. You'll continue to cover your scars up with makeup. You'll continue to hide out stay at work late. You'll continue to hide your messages in your Instagram or your Facebook. I have no relationship with them sponsorship. Why? That's a name, couple social media platforms. You'll continue to do these things. Why? Because you can't move on without changing. You see, these are the directions coming from the messenger. If the spirit of God down on the inside of me trying to tell your spirit, about change in the kingdom of God. Number seven, change means progress. Change means progress. The progression of the church, the progression of your personal life, the progression of your family all starts when we begin to make changes in our lives. You start saving differently than when you save when you're in your 20s and 30s. You start looking at investment differently. You start looking at academics differently. You start looking at your marriage differently. You start looking at how you spend differently. Why? Because change means progress. If you want to go from the apartment to the townhouse to the house, there has to be a change in your processes in order to progress. And number eight, change documents our journey. Change documents our journey. Change lets us know where we are with God. Directions from the messengers. And let me give you a letter C, and we're going to close out this morning. Letter C. We said we should be listening for directions from the messengers. Number, let us see. We should be listening for confirmation. Confirmation. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we thank you for another opportunity to glorify your holy and your righteous name. And today, God, I just want to bless your people. I want to bless them. Make sure they're saved and filled with the Spirit of God and bless your people today, God. And I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. So if you're out there, you're unsaved, you're in a backslidden state, and you want to find your way to Jesus Christ, repeat after me. It's going to be simple today. 
Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Today, God, I receive salvation. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And if you have prayed that prayer, I want you to visit our website. Click on the link that says Start Your Journey. There you will find more information about your new growth and your new path with Jesus Christ. This is only the beginning if this is your first time receiving salvation. If you're coming back to God, welcome back. Jesus is excited for the purpose in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your people, call them and chosen by your name. Cover them from all hurt, harm, danger, seen and unseen. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Let's go. Thank you for joining us for our service today. We hope you enjoyed the NAC experience. We would love to have you partner with us. If this is your heart's desire, here's how. Visit our website at neveralonecc.org. Click the service menu and select partner with us. Under partner with us, you will see a partnership form. Be sure to fill out the partnership form in detail and click Submit. We look forward to partnering with you. Let's go.